today we are going to talk about the chronic effects of cardiac failure or the chronic stages of cardiac failure which is basically characterized by fluid retention and recovery of the heart we started our lecture about cardiac failure and in the last lecture in the previous lecture we discussed the acute effects of cardiac failure and the main effects of compensation by sympathetic system in moderate cardiac failure as an acute effect now we are initially going to summarize the acute effects which we discussed previously and then we will come to the chronic effects which basically includes the chronic uh, fluid retention and the recovery of the heart so cardiac failure is the inability of the heart to fulfill the needs of the human body or the periphery this is the human heart and it is unable to pump enough blood so that it can fulfill the needs or the uh, demands of the human body now cardiac failure can occur due to a different condition but most probably it is due to the ischemic heart failure and here we are basically focusing on the cardiac failure that is occurring due to is ischemic heart disease now what happens is that the blood vessels normally which the blood vessels which are supplying blood to the heart muscles when they get blocked when they get blocked blood supply to certain parts of the heart muscles decreases and this is the mostly most common cause of acute heart failure what happens in the acute uh, stages is that the cardiac output the amount of blood that the heart pumps every minute it suddenly decreases the cardiac output decreases and so the heart is unable to pump enough blood forward and similarly the amount of blood that is coming to the heart it also decreases or blood is unable to return to the heart so it leads to damming damming of blood or pooling of blood in the peripheries these are the two main effects that occurs in as an acute uh, in acute heart failure or basically these are the acute effects of cardiac failure now for the compensation of decreased cardiac failure and the compensation of damming or pooling of blood in the peripheries the main effects or the main role is basically played by the sympathetic nervous system basically the sympathetic system they uh, excite the heart and the peripheral vessel it increases the sympathetic vessel uh, innervation basically increases the heart rate it increases the force of contraction of the heart and it increases the filling pressure so the heart rate increases the pressure of the heart uh, the force of contraction of the heart increases and the pressure due to contraction of the peripheral vessel the the filling pressure the pressure with which blood is returning to the heart it also increases so it helps in increasing or elevating the cardiac output and it also helps in improving the pooling or damming of the blood now this thing has been shown here with the help of a graph in this graph on y axis we have plotted the cardiac output this is the cardiac output and here we have plotted the right atrial pressure or the pressure in the right atrium now here we have the right atrium here the left uh, left atrium right ventricle left ventricle now what happens here in the normal this red color is basically showing the normal heart and we see that in the normal heart the cardiac output is 5 liters per minute here we have the cardiac output 5 liters per minute and this 5 liters per minute is at a right atrial pressure of 0 mm of mercury right atrial pressure of 0 mm of mercury and 5 liters per minute cardiac output this is normal when acute failure occurs the cardiac output falls to this level or it falls from 5 to this level so the cardiac output it may fall to this level which may correspond to 2 or 3 liters per minute and similarly the right atrial pressure from this point it increases to this point so this is the effect of acute damage due to acute damage the cardiac output decreases from this level to this level or from 5 to up to 2 or 3 liters per minute and the right atrial pressure increases from 0 mm of mercury to 2 3 or 4 mm of mercury so the pressure here increases now to compensate the acute damage the sympathetic system activated the heart rate increases the force of contraction of the heart increases the filling pressure of the heart increases which basically which basically improves the cardiac output from this level to this level this is the effect of sympathetic system so the cardiac output increases again slightly but at the cost of increased right atrial pressure 
the right atrial pressure has increased slightly these are the acute effects and the compensation by sympathetic system now this sympathetic system has slightly helped to recover the cardiac output it has slightly helped to recover the cardiac output from this level to this level now starts the chronic effects or the chronic stage of cardiac failure in which the fluid retention will occur and recovery of the damaged portion of the heart will occur now normally normally the extra fluid is excreted with the help of kidneys in the form of urine when the cardiac failure occurs the cardiac output the cardiac output decreases so the arterial pressure also falls the arterial pressure also falls and the blood flow to the kidneys also decreases this this leads to decrease urine formation decrease urine formation and more fluid remains in the system or in the body so this stage is basically known as fluid retention this is known as fluid retention now how much fluid retention will occur how much fluid will be retained how much so it can be 1 liter 2 liter 3 liter how much so the how much fluid that will be retained in the body because of the uh, renal shutdown or uh, because of the decreased uh, urine formation because due to fall in the arterial pressure the the blood flow to the kidneys has decreased and it has led to the decreased urine formation now this retention this increase in the fluid in the system because of decreased fluid output in the form of urine it depends it depends on the on the level of damaged if the cardiac output has decreased a lot then the fluid retention will be more and it can be detrimental or it can be lethal and if it is moderate the flu the cardiac failure is moderate then it cannot be lethal or it will be helpful it can be helpful so how is basically the fluid retention helpful it is helpful because when more fluid retains in the system it basically increases it increases the filling pressure it increases the filling pressure the pressure with which the fluid or the blood is returning to the right atrium of the heart it improves similarly it decreases the resistance of the veins it decreases the resistance of the veins because due to collection of the fluid due to pooling of the uh, fluid uh, fluid due to collection of more fluid in the body the veins dilate the veins dilate and their resistance decreases so due to increase filling pressure and due to decrease resistance the venous return improves venous return improve more blood starts coming toward the heart although the cardiac output has decreased the cardiac output has decreased but this thing has been compensated by retention of more fluid more fluid is being retained at that level of cardiac output which helps in increasing uh, filling pressure in uh, which also helps in decreasing the resistance of the vein by dilating the vein and it helps in increasing the venous return so by increasing the venous return the cardiac output ultimately increases the cardiac output it increases so in the chronic stage the the cardiac output improves even from this level to this level or it may return to almost the normal level so initially with the acute damage the cardiac output falls to this level and with the sympathetic activation its uh, the cardiac output improves slightly at the cost of increased right atrial pressure then with the fluid retention phase in which the kidney starts retaining the fluid the cardiac output improves more and the cardiac output even returns to exactly normal level but at the cost of high right atrial pressure the atrial pressure the right atrial pressure the pressure at this uh, this side in the right atrium may be up to 6 or 7 mm of mercury now if the damage to the heart if the damage to the heart or the cardiac failure is very large if the damage is very large for example this area has been damaged and along with this area this area has also been damaged then the cardiac output will fall 
tremendously and the kidneys will go into complete shutdown the kidneys will go into complete shutdown and there will be extreme retention there will be extreme retention of fluid now when a lot of fluid accumulate in the body the body will not be able to get rid of salt and water and it may lead to detrimental effects it will lead to it will lead to edema it will lead to stretching of the heart stretching of the heart will basically lead to more cardiac failure and the cardiac output will decrease more and then it will lead to pulmonary edema so pulmonary edema will lead to decreased oxygen saturation and these these effects it may even lead to death so slight retention slight fluid retention by the kidneys in moderate failure may be helpful but extreme retention in a large failure it may be detrimental it may lead to death because it will accumulate or it will retain so much fluid that it may the fluid will be accumulated in the uh, periphery in the arms and in the lungs and in the liver and in the heart and it will lead to uh, stretching of the heart the heart will stretch more the the failure the field or the damaged heart when it stretch more it will it is a weak heart and it has been stretched more it will be unable to contract and the cardiac output will fall more and on top of that there is pulmonary edema there is fluid in the lungs so the con 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 oxygenation of the blood cannot occur so it leads to a vicious cycle and it can lead to death even now another stage in the uh, chronic heart failure or another chronic stage in the heart failure or the cardiac failure is basically the recovery the recovery stage if the damage is not very much large or the damage is a small or minimal then recovery of the recovery of the heart will start and what happens is those those areas those areas which were basically damaged the damaged areas they will start receiving blood through collateral circulation like the normal blood vessels which are existing they will start giving blood to the damaged areas although the main blood vessel or the uh, the main blood vessel which is supplying blood to these damaged area has been blocked but the normal vessels they will form collaterals or communicating vessels to these areas and these areas will start receiving blood and it will recover so collateral formation will occur collateral formation and the remaining normal areas of the heart the functional areas of the heart will hypertrophy or it will increase in size so the the collateral circulation and the hypertrophy of the normal functioning uh, remaining heart portion both of them will lead to recovery of the uh, cardiac failure and with the recovery with the recovery the cardiac output will return exactly to normal and then the effects of sympathetic system will starts will start decreasing the effects of sympathetic system which included the increased high rate the increased force of contraction the vasoconstriction it will starts decreasing and the heart will recover but even at this stage the right atrial pressure will be high the right atrial pressure will be high because a lot of fluid retention has occurred but slowly and gradually when the effects of sympathetic system go away the even this right atrial pressure may return to normal and the cardiac output may return to normal and the heart may completely recover from the damage so that's all about the chronic effects of the uh, heart failure the initial the acute effects were basically the decrease in cardiac output and damming of the uh, blood in the peripheries which will which were compensated by the sympathetic system but after that the chronic stage starts and uh, fluid retention starts so increased fluid collection ultimately leads to increase venous return because the the decrease blood flow to the kidneys decrease the urine formation and the fluid in the body increases leading to increased venous return which recovers the cardiac output even towards the normal level 
and initially the right atrial pressure is high but then the effects of sympathetic system go away the heart rate returns to normal the force con uh, return to normal the contraction or the constriction of the peripheral vessels it returns to normal because the effects of sympathetic system go away and the heart may completely recover so that's a brief introductory uh, lecture about the acute and chronic stages of the cardiac failure thanks a lot for watching the video